I've always said uh, Slackware is user-friendly as a coiled rattlesnake. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin, that's Jill, and everyone watching us live here on Twitch. Pretty chunky show to talk about. Jill mm -hmm. tried to surprise me and Jill's like, hey, I got my new, because we just brought back the LWDW shirts. Yes. You can see Jill has oh, hers on. It. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Those are back in the store. I'm very, very happy, happy that it's nice and soft and comfortable. I have two other LWW shirts, but this, this one is more comfortable. It's a softer shirt. Softer shirt. And I have on <laughs> the new one just back in the store because I did yeah. like the separation. That looks cool. <laughs> your IBM Obey, your blue hat. It has nothing to do with either of those. Whatever you want to project upon this shirt is up to you. For me, this is just called a bossy shirt when you want to put something in obey me mode. Yes. Okay. That in mind, it's got the nice little off-white uh, Linux Seamcast. Chalky, this is Mark II. That the first one I got, because I get samples of these before I put them on the store. I didn't like the uh, separation in, with the lines here, so I had to make some corrections there. Yeah, and I will nice. make a version of this in black, but I'm also waiting for the sample to come in because oh, i gotta yeah. do the outline around um yeah is it gonna be like a white outline on yeah. the obey yeah no i gotta make sure that's right mm -hmm. and it, sorry it takes a while because we use spreadshirt for these so these are nice chonky shirts these mm -hmm. are not cheap and uh but they're not expensive because i'm not trying to make money making like a buck or two off these things and uh then you gotta send me a notification sometimes because if they ever change their prices on their base merch It'll be under from what we were charging, which has happened a couple of times. And I'll have to <laughs> move it back up. But we have these, we got die cut stickers and all that fun stuff. Yes. Look at that. You Yay. thought you were going to get away from a shilling? Too bad. <laughs> Store.linuxgamecast.com. <laughs> yes. There we go. <laughs> Let's get right into it this week. With well, something I ran across earlier, and I was like, man, you know what? This thing called Mission mm -hmm. Center. And I'm, I'm looking at that. I'm scrolling through it, and I, I'm and I've seen this before. Like that looks familiar. What we're mm -hmm. looking at is uh, what you would consider like you know GNOME system monitor, but it looks a bit different. It does because if you like Windows, wow, this looks awfully Windowsy, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> doesn't it? Just just a little bit, just just, just slightly, <laughs> you know. In fact, this thing. Um, was verified because I posted it in our Discord. And I'm like, hey, that's, this looks kind of Windowsy. And our, our resident uh, Windows user in our Discord is like, yeah, yeah, it kind of does. What does it do? It monitors CPU, RAM, disk, GPU, and your Ether noodles. And you know it, it's written in Rust. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> I tried to build it. And then I it was complaining about some cargo crate or whatever. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go down this rabbit hole this afternoon. So yeah, uh, didn't work out of the box on Debian, but there is a um, dark mode and Jill, it also has a flat pack. You had flat pack installed too, right? Yeah. So I installed the Mission Center as a flat pack in the Pop! OS software shop. It was already in there, the latest version. And um, I like the nice big graphs that are, you know, really easy to read. And honestly, this is kind of a Swiss Army knife for monitoring system resource usage on Linux. It's it's really sweet. There's lots of other really good tools out there, but this is just pretty to look at and graphically beautiful. <laughs> and the only monitor I can think of that could be added is actually CPU temperature, which I like to monitor frequently. So uh, Linux Mission, the Mission Center doesn't have the CPU temperature, but I think that's something they could probably fix easily. The GPU monitor, uh, on the other hand, does have a temperature readout which is great just really awesome i like it i like it mm -hmm. and you know what you got all of the screenshots i'm just yeah going on. it makes me so happy They're, to see this it show yes. off the work that you've put into a project people yes because um, it, it's beautiful it's right. going to be a uh, go-to now every time i i set up a new uh, linux system oh yeah i would never mm -hmm. use something like this but i like it mm -hmm. just you know, I'm beat up. If I need, if I want fancy, that's me. I'm old school to a yeah, fault. Like H stops usually where I'm at. I'll type in sensors <laughs> yeah. if I need a reading on something. I got yeah. a widget. I do have a widget, an uh, XFCE. What is it called? Uh, oh, I don't 
you know, it just shows like the K10 temps on the thread rubber and just just really basic stuff. Yeah. But I like <laughs> why is stuff like this important? Family, it's real familiar. Yeah, it's real familiar. So if you're coming over from Windows and um, you're like, oh, I know how this works, I understand this, and it, it's good to have that, you know, almost one to one look and feel. Mm-hmm. Because when when you're watching uh, other tech tubers and they're showing off and they're doing something really cool, like really crazy powerful hardware, and they open the this the equivalent up on my Windows, I'm like, why, why, why? <laughs> Why do you have such cool hardware and you're using Windows on it? I don't get it, but that's cool. So there you go. There's the flat pack. It'll work. Uh, flat pack will work on anything. And you know what? When it comes to containers, uh, containerized apps on the desktop, flat pack is the lesser of two evils. So make it that what you <laughs> will. Um, Jill, somebody is getting old. Oh, yeah. Just like we are, Ben. <laughs> so it's we've been or- old. What do you mean? Getting old? <laughs> yeah. So Slackware Linux is the world's oldest surviving Linux distribution, and it has turned 30 years old. Oh, my God, I feel so old. So Slackware, you know, remains actively maintained and is highly regarded for its awesome stability. And it was once thought dead, but last year, Slackware released version 15.0 after a six-year gap. (laughs) I was so happy about that. And I actually still run Slackware on one of my main machines with the XFCE desktop. And like uh, me and Ven, Slackware is a lot of people's first introduction to, to Linux. I started with Slackware in 1993, and because it was my first Linux distro, it really has a special place in my heart. And getting 24 three and a half floppy disk images installed and working correctly, woohoo! <laughs> I knew I was elite Linux actor <laughs> when that happened. And not blowing up my 21-inch CRT monitor in the process with the XF86 config file was, was a feat. And that, that's how I learned that, how to in, install Linux and not uh, burn up my CRT with the improper uh, 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 horizontal and vertical uh, hertz. <laughs> so that was a thing. And Slackware, you know, it's extremely fast, nimble, and stable. And what's cool, and this is, it's so very true, its goal is to be the most Unix-like Linux distribution. And and it is, it definitely is. There are no official repositories for Slackware. The only official packages Slackware provides are available on the install media. However, there are many third-party repositories for Slackware. And Slackware's package management system is called PKG Tools, like PKG install and whatnot. Slack packs. Yeah, Slack packs. But you can also now get uh, use Slapped Get and G Slapped. You can use to resolve dependencies, install applications like you do with Debian's apt. So they've made it a lot easier now to install packages. And Slackware actually includes all my favorite classic multimedia apps, including mPlayer, XMMS, and Cine. <laughs> so I just, I, I love to go and, and play with those old, old apps on the classic sa- Slackware. And I personally have been a patron of Slackware for quite some time and happily support Patrick Volkerding and his small team of developers because I love Slackware Linux. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> it's been around forever. It's omnipresent when you think about Linux. Absolutely. You think about Slackware. I mean, it, Slackware predates 1.0 mm-hmm. kernel. Yes. Oh. And yes, yes. Back in 1993, you were on dial up. You were downloading mm-hmm. save icons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All 24 of them. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. You spent that afternoon. <laughs> Not even afternoon, sometimes it'd be a weekend before you get everything downloaded. Yeah. But eventually you would get it to boot, then you'd be like, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see if I can get a graphical X session, X386 session up and running on that. And that was another weekend. It was good times. We learned a lot of stuff. Yeah. Now, it's been a minute. It's been almost six years since 14.2. But mm-hmm. uh, this current release is a little bit of a break. But Slackware, you know, much like just Pat himself, he's like, it's done when it's done. You know, it's ready when mm-hmm. it's ready, which I, I, I'm i down with that. However, like newer updates going forward, and it's in a lot of the 
background work has been done to make it a lot easier. So we should see more frequent updates from Slack. We won't get the, yeah. is the project still alive questions <laughs> yes. for the development <laughs> cycles anymore. And do I still have a use Slack? And no, I mean, probably since like maybe the early 2000s, Slack mm. was... And probably still is to some extent. Um, I've always said uh, Slackware is user friendly as a coiled rattlesnake, which I think holds true. However, um, back then it was great for low end systems that I wanted to get set up with the yeah. GUI networking and relatively easy for the time, you know, Slack pack installs. Today, would I recommend it? Learning, playing around. It's still very yes. Unix-like, and don't be afraid to learn, you know, just figure out how stuff works. Like, mm -hmm. that is frighteningly gone. You know, we talked about on Saturday on Linux Gamecast about a uh, writer who tried to run hollow ISO as desktop Linux, and they wrote an entire article about how Linux isn't ready for the <sighs> desktop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Based on this hacked up, nothing against hollow ISO because hollow ISO developers are very clear. It's like, dude, don't, don't like mess around with this. This is prototype stuff I'm playing with. And use that, like, just the disconnect from the, and there was a lot of like, I didn't immediately understand how to do this. Therefore, it's wrong. I do not support that type of thinking. I mm -hmm. never have. It's a different operating system. I don't um, walk into it with, it's another case of I got this, bro. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> yeah, and, you, and you and you don't you don't compare to a distro that's still niche. That's you know based off of SteamOS. <laughs> you know it's 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 not your average consumer consumer Linux distro like uh, you know Ubuntu or Fedora. <laughs> I don't. Maybe because the knowledge skill never works the other way. Because can mm. somebody who's been running desktop Linux like I haven't touched a Windows box like. Not from like, ooh, Windows is nasty and all that. Like, use Windows where it makes sense. I've just not been in a professional situation where I have, like, had to really tinker with Windows. Yeah. Can you figure Windows out, though? Yeah, you can, mm -hmm. because it's been filed down for the least common denominator. You know, that, that's, it's very accessible in that. Yeah. But your experience with Windows, like, doesn't translate. And I'll, I'll keep saying this. Like, you got to take the time to learn how Linux is. Exactly. Just like you learned Windows, Finn, you have to learn Linux. <laughs> I'm going to say you need to be in the right mindset. Again, you're yeah. not just going to figure it out. That That's ego talking. I mean, I'm constantly learning new stuff, and that's one of the things I like about the operating system. And, you know, getting somebody up and running to the point, like if you're technically adept under Windows and something breaks under Linux, like if you just get a perfect install, you don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. What do you mm -hmm. do when something breaks? See, that's some of the knowledge we're missing right now because Absolutely. the solution to that, nuke and pave these days. I'm like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. If it breaks, that's a challenge. Your box is <laughs> yes. thrown down a gauntlet and it's like, fix me without wiping. I'm like, no, I'm just going to wipe. Like, don't do that. Happy birthday, Slackware. Very happy. Yeah, we love They're you. They're still Slackware. around. <laughs> so, not really part of the, I, I think, a Red Hat drama soap opera. It's winding down. It's winding mm -hmm. down. But I do need to bring this up because um, I don't want to say a casualty of it, but the first casualty of it is mm -hmm. Omo Linux. Uh, the future of Omo Linux it, uh, is bright, I should say, written by Benny Vasquez, the chair of the board for Omo Linux OS. And they go through this. Uh, they had to make this announcement. And I, I get it. I get it. After, you know, Rel has done their thing, you know, unlike Rocky, which we talked about last week, or might have been the week before, you know, Rocky has this Rube Goldberg plan of getting their way around the new restrictions that Red Hat's put in place. Yeah. Almost like, we don't have time for that. We're just going to start doing our own thing. We are. It's still going to be Red Hat compatible-ish, but it no longer will be maintaining that bug for bug compatibility. So that means that they're going to be able to Except patches that are outside of mainstream, and they're going to be able to make fixes quicker. However, however, and all that's great, all that's great, unless unless you need a rel clone, then you're not going to be able to use it. So, is this going to be something new? Yes, mm -hmm. it is. What do you think is going to happen, Joe? 
Good news. Oh, I think this is awesome news. And honestly, truly, I think this is going to progress the um, Linux ecosystem for the better. This might be the best news for them. It's going to even make them more independent. And they've always been, you know, Alma Linux has always been great when it comes to giving back to the community, filing bugs, and contributing upstream in Fedora and CentOS Stream. And this will not change. They are going to continue to support that. And if you would like to help them out, you can join the Alma Linux OS Foundation or become a sponsor on GitHub or Open Collective and report bugs. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> But this is their their community is wonderful. I got to meet quite a few of the members at the Southern California Linux Expo 20X back in March. And that was a wonderful experience. I was very impressed with their enthusiasm and just the community in general. They are great. It's going to be interesting to see how everything shakes down. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we got Susie doing their thing. Oracle, I don't care what you're doing. Neither does anyone else that's not been locked in to your stack. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to see how Rocky's going to end up playing this out. I, I like their little games that they're going to be playing and uh, <laughs> their workarounds. I'm, I'm a huge fan of that. And here we have Alma. Like, yeah. Oh, go do your own thing. You know, yeah. maybe, maybe, you know, yeah, you know what? They changed, they changed the deal like halfway through the game. You're like, uh oh. Well, let's see what it shakes up. Maybe Alma will become its uh, own thing. Um, yeah, wish him best of luck. Mm -hmm. Me too. Absolutely. Well, it's not often that I see a keyboard that I think I can tolerate. Oh, this one you can put track ball balls on. So Ben really liked this one. <laughs> so this is actually a really unique use for a Raspberry Pi, a split keyboard PCB that uses a Raspberry Pi 2040 processor in each half. It is known as the Zimi, or X-I-M-I, -I, and you can grab one on Finger Punch for $79. And this is, it comes with just the PCB, and the PCB serves as a base for those who want to build their own split keyboards. And this purchase includes two separate PCBs, one for the left side and one for the right, so you get both. And each board has a Raspberry Pi 2040 processor and 16 megabytes of storage. And there's breakout pins, which are accessible for three extra GPIO pins, as well as SPI, 12C, LED support, and USB-C. And here's what's cool. The Zimi has support for chalk V1 or MX switches, per key LEDs, rotary encoders, 34 millimeter trackballs, Yes, that you can have two of them, one on each side. Circ track a circ trackball, three-way thumb switch, haptic feedback, and it has a pre-soldered audio buzzer <laughs> that you can put on it. <laughs> so this this thing is full of lot lots of cool goodies. Some of which you don't you know, get when you buy very expensive keyboards from uh, customizable keyboards from manufacturers. Yeah, I want a speaker my keyboard so it can <laughs> scream at me. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's cool. <laughs> and, you know, the, this PCB is actually a starting point for creating a fun and unique customizable keyboard. And you can find the files for a 3D printable case and the build guide on the Zimi GitHub page linked here in our show notes. So go go make a really cool keyboard. I mean, a really cool, <laughs> unique keyboard, <laughs> one that other people don't have. <laughs> I think this has the bones. Now, the immediate thing I'm going to point out, it's not wireless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that, that's kind of my dream, like having the, because I like this idea of uh, like truly a split keyboard. You know, this the design concept's been around for a long time. This is not, you know, groundbreaking here, but there's always that cable connecting the two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that. always. And then there's the yeah. other cable connecting it to the PC. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm angry enough that I have to have a cable on my desktop for the stream deck. <laughs> but uh, really, the only thing I'll take issue with is, like, you can build this yourself. Everything's open source. All the designs that you need. 
and it looks really nice. I don't know how mm-hmm. practical the dual track balls are going to be, but that'd be fun to play with. Maybe you can come up with an interesting use for them. And, you know, it's using the available 2040 chips, so it's always good to see people putting that to use. You still need, even if you spend the 79 bucks, uh, you're going to need the keycaps, the switches, the LEDs, and all that. Yeah. And more importantly, I think you're going to want to uh, find somebody with a better 3D printer. Because <laughs> once you zoom in on this, that doesn't look all that good. Um, <laughs> Like yeah, maybe see the bumps in the rough. Take it texture. and ship it to a uh, professional 3D printing surface, or you know, if you know anybody who does injection molding or wood carving, because I'm sure somebody's going to make this out of wood mm-hmm. at yeah. some point. I like the design of it, and you know, you can see the different designs. You know, if you don't want the trackpad, you can get the little touchpad here. <laughs> yes, so you can just move around. That's nice. I just really thought cool. of a. Yeah, you know, I just thought of a. A way to use the two trackballs in a dual shooter game. <laughs> I think that one might be. Oh, like a twin you know, stick? Yeah, like a twin stick. Yeah. <laughs> that would be interesting. The problem is, is we need a way for the fire button now. Ah, uh, yeah. There you we go. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I see. That, that still yeah. might work, though. Uh, but yeah, you could modify it, maybe add, because there's a lot of empty space there on the, the top right of the trackball. We just, we just go ham on it and we just put yeah. some, some micro switches up at the top there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that might work. I don't know. It's a neat project. Links to all this got to be in our show notes. But before mm-hmm. we get out of here, I want to take a moment to thank everybody supporting the show. Uh, we got a new Twitch resub from Gametron last night because we're doing Track Mania on Tuesdays. Yes. What did you think of the maps last night? All right. Oh, I love the maps last night. I'm looking forward to playing them and practicing. <laughs> you, you didn't find one you just like that seething hatred. I always try to at least get like one map in there to upset everybody. But upset, yeah. I mean challenge people because challenge, yeah. And sometimes it's fun, but sometimes you always want to have that nice little bit of what we do on Tuesdays is continuing adult education. It's like playing chess. It's like playing checkers, but to keep you active with 14 new tracks every week, we got a great group of people. We're always looking Mm -hmm. for more. Actually, maybe four more, because I think our our hard limit is going to be around 12 on that. We got a private server, swaps out, runs 24 7. All of our scores are recorded locally on our own server. So you can always race against people asymmetrically and look at their games like, oh, can I beat that? Can I beat that? (laughs) Then we come back on Fridays after having a couple of days of practicing. And we do a rounds match, which is completely different than just trying to set times. We all start at the same time. And it's who finishes the most. Yeah. And the problem is. Consistent. If you, right. <laughs> if you try to be really fast, much higher chance of you wrecking really fast. Yeah. And time and time again, it has been the turtle that wins the matches. And I'm like, <laughs> slow and steady. And I get it. It's one of the reasons when I win maps, I do, because I am I ha- have to be slow and steady. I'm usually slower than everyone else I'm we're playing with, and it's yeah, because of my vision. Around cussing like a sailor. Don't listen to me. <laughs> but, but I have to memorize the maps, and as a result, and, and things that are coming at fast speed, I don't see well, so I have to be a little slower than you guys are. Well, you got to sit further away from the monitor, give you more time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I have gotten a lot faster. My car does go <laughs> zoom, zoom sometimes. <laughs> it's all about practice. Uh, yes. Everybody got of started off at, and it's an old game too, by the way. I want to bring that up. You know, it's, it's like 11, 12 so year old much game. Fun. It runs on integrated graphics. Great. Yeah. It still looks good too. Yeah. So you can play it on anything. Um, it, it's <laughs> been fun to see people come in, not really knowing anything. And it's, not just racing like racing's boring this is like physics platforming puzzle solving yeah that's what i love about it you start each map with like whoop and we'll all go the wrong way then we're like okay then <laughs> you see people creeping around then we're looking for like ways because <laughs> a lot of the maps have um shortcuts built into them that we don't realize until like five minutes into the game we're like oh geez okay now we found this fun time come play with us if you mm-hmm. want to get all the information just head over to linux gamecast fill the casuals a bit there if you're a Twitch sub, you get some Bezo bucks, go ahead, try it out. If you're a patron, you currently got access to our Discord. Same way as if you're a Twitch sub, hop in, check out the channel. Everything's posted in there. We'd love to see you on Friday. But that's not your thing. 
Mm -hmm. check out our support page. Share the show. Tell some people about it. I've organized this for a patron, Libra Pay, PayPal, Yay. crypto. If you're a crypto yes. bro, uh, <laughs> we got Amazon wish list. Jill's got one. Jordan has one. Pedro has one. I got one for the studio merch store, which hopefully, if it's updated, we will see. Yeah, it's something that, I should have tested. Okay. There it is. Hey, there it is. There's the Boston yeah. shirt MK2 that I'm currently sporting right now. <laughs> it almost knocked the stream then. deck. <laughs> I, beautiful might be the wrong word for it. <laughs> It might. It might. Uh, well, the LWW that, shirt is beautiful. <laughs> it works. Yes. Um, and they finally got the colors right on it. Um, Amazon storefront. If you're looking for everything that's in the studio, mm -hmm. click or itemize the list. Look at that. Everything's organized. Sweet. PC, audio, lighting. And I'm not, this is not for you to buy it on Amazon if you don't want to buy it on Amazon. Fair warning. I think we get like a fraction of a half of a penny yeah. if you buy something for this. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're worried, you're not worried about it. And you're like, hey, what's that monitor? You know, what's that back in the rack? And uh, that's how you find it. Because when you say, hey, Vin, what is that? That's the link I send you. And I'm not trying to blow you off. I'm like, there's everything. Go, mm -hmm. go check it out. I think it's at Humble Affiliate Links. We do thank you for your support. Letting us do what we do. Loud, live, and independent. And tomorrow, which is turning into a very interesting series. Yeah, is Jordan empty and empty. Jordan we're going having through fun with portals. Portal <laughs> reloaded. And uh, Empty's audio is going to get a little bit better. I'm going to do a little surgery on that. And Jordan's going to record and I'm going to create a nice little thing. Because, you know, he's on a little headset, which, you know, it's legible, but doesn't, it wouldn't sound bad if Jordan wasn't set up the way he was set up for his audio train. It's one of yeah. those comparative things. You know, if, they, <laughs> if Jordan was on a headset, it would be fine. You wouldn't even notice it. This is great. Portal reloaded introduces a new mechanic, which is the square portal. Yes. It's a rectangle. Is a rectangle a square? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, and it makes you have to go through past, present, and current in order to figure these puzzles out. And me and Jordan originally went through Portal 2, and that was bad enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a next level of psychosis and just pure maliciousness that I enjoy watching them try to figure out. And they yeah. do. But it is that if you want to sit around and help them, because they're looking for help. Nobody's, I haven't found a walkthrough on this. This is like, we're, those two are going through in co-op in real time. Um, they, I'm sure they would love your help. I try to watch it. I can sometimes attempt to be helpful, but <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know. My brain hurts. And you will spend 20 to 30 minutes with that one reward. And they finally yeah, figure it out. It's I good know. to see. I, I played for, through the first three maps on the, the single player mm -hmm. campaign. And it, it is a brain teaser, that's for sure. <laughs> and yes, then you got to factor in the cooperation yeah. thing on top of that. And <laughs> it's a delightful stream that's going to be at 7.30 tomorrow, unless it's not, but it should be. <laughs> and yeah. you can always find everything after the fact um, on our Uncut channel. So if you're looking for like the long VODs, like this show, it'll be up like next week for everybody. And for patrons, it'll be up uh, this afternoon. But yeah, you just subscribe to that and you'll get all of our live and uncut stuff and game streams from Twitch and all those fun things. Cool. Are mm -hmm. we good? Can we do credits yes. now, Joe? Yes, we can. Because then, then I take a sip of something. Oh, we can thank all our beautiful patrons. Right, Any, um, anytime. <laughs> anytime? Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Yay. We have one of our advisors in chat right now, which is our Theron. And we have Omegas, who's also one of our advisors. And we have our executive producers, Barbrandt, Scott M, Mike G, Drummer, Pebble, <laughs> and our Chicago Kicks people, Super Dust Out, Empty, Blasphemia, <laughs> Blasphemia. Sea Monsters, Trudgills, Veritanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Nubbin, <laughs> Death Notes, <laughs> I am Fox Dog, Swine, <laughs> and lots of chairlings. Too many awesome people to name <laughs> they go by the screen those credits go by the screen too quickly for me to read <laughs> thank you for your support everybody but you know who you are <laughs> we'll be back next week yay <laughs> bye bye <laughs> bye bye everyone love you all <laughs>